What is up, everybody, from our AT&T 5G virtual studios? Welcome to Group Chat presented by AT&T 5G. Oh, my goodness. The team is back together again. Kaylin Carr, my my partner in crime. Um, it is so lovely to have you today. You're filling in for, for Stephen Keel. Um, but this is just like riding a bike for us, right? Oh, well, I don't know. I might be a little bit rusty, actually. I'm a little nervous. But uh, listen, any morning I get to wake up and see that lovely smile. I mean, what a start to my day. I'm ready to go. Oh, my God. Oh, it's like he never left. Um, No, seriously, this is going to be so much fun. Um, This is reminding me of our our good old twim days. What a show. What a show that was, you know? I feel like this is just... (laughs) It Man, will live in infamy forever. It literally on will. YouTube. You it literally go will. It literally will. I highly recommend checking out some of those because um, we had some fun. But um, yeah, we've got a great show in store. Lots to talk about. We're going to start off right off the bat, um, getting into the standings, starting in the Eastern Conference. Okay, we've got. I mean, New England, fine, great. You're you're great. Forty six points. Stop bragging. You're running with this. Yeah, exactly. You're making us feel bad. Um, but I want to talk about Nashville SC, who was right there in second place. Um, they actually, they could have had more points on the board at this point. They had a 1-1 draw against Orlando at home. Um, had an opportunity to kind of push their way up that those standings just a little bit. But um, I'm, I'm so impressed. I'm so impressed with Nashville SC. And I feel like they're a team that... We haven't talked enough about, um, especially this is their own. This is their second season in in the league, and 2020. I feel like it's just. I mean, everything that they had to deal with in their inaugural season with COVID and all of it. I mean, it's just um, pretty pretty remarkable. I was Jeez. on a podcast. Do you feel like a oh what was the oh podcast? no oh no I was a guest on a, a national SC podcast called Pharmaceutical Soccer. Great little pod. And they were like, do you think that we, that, you know, the national media covers Nashville enough? And I was like, no, I don't. Because I think that that's pretty incredible that what they're doing right now. And look at them. Do in you second ever feel place. like a like a proud parent? Because you've been it, on this early. Literally exactly what I said on this podcast. I'm like, I, I feel like I was like just like a teeny, even just a teeny tiny little part of, of that club from the inception. Because I met them before. Before they were even uh, a blink in in the eyes of, of MLS, and and here <laughs> here they are in second place. Um, so that's really cool. I, I also I just it. one thing I want to point out too about these Eastern Conference standings: Columbus is um, below the playoff line. Okay, mm. these are the reigning mm. champs. Five straight losses for Columbus. Some, I, I I don't I don't mm. know what's going on. I don't know. This not is good. not this is not how I thought. Things were going to go for them. What do you think? Still Kayla? time. Still time. Still time for Columbus. It's Ooh. trending the wrong direction, though. New York also below the playoff line. They've got a long streak of making the playoffs at this point, I believe, in like a decade. So yeah. uh, can they get over Atlanta United? Joseph, he's starting to roll a little bit. Can they get going uh, with Pineda coming in to uh, help them out and see if they can take them over to get them back into the playoffs? So the, the East is up there. But when I look over at the West, right, you got to start with Seattle. They have been tremendous. Um, and this is amazing this past week where they're just sitting back and they're like, you know what? Let's bring in Rui Diaz and, and Ladero. Let's just go for it. And within one minute, they get the goal. Uh, sporting Kansas City, Daniel Shallowy. I think we'll talk about him at some point in this. Can he be Absolutely. a dark horse pick for? I don't even about dark horse anymore. This guy is scoring goals in bunches. Uh, I believe 12 now on the season. Incredible story there. And then the Galaxy. Yes. I don't really like always giving them too much love because <laughs> of all the hurt they've given me in my life. But uh, Greg Vanny deserves a ton of credit. Has to be up there for uh, one of the front runners for Coach of the Year. Yeah. Uh, what a turnaround for them. Um, pretty exciting stuff. All right. Speaking of exciting, uh, it, 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 guess what? We got Heineken Rivalry Week ahead of us i know i mean there's mls all-star coming up it's heineken rivalry week it's like there's just a a lot going on but we have some incredible matches uh this weekend to look forward to and we're gonna start we're we're starting off big because who doesn't love a good old-fashioned cali classico uh I, seriously i mean it's one of the best matchups ever this is uh the la galaxy taking on san jose tonight tonight friday night 10 30 p.m eastern on espn2 and uh the um now la 
has won the series this year already. They're they're two two and zero oh in this series so far in in twenty twenty one. Um, is the first time that they're going to win the series. I think since like. 2017 or something like that or no 2019 2019 mm -hmm. um san jose unbeaten in their last nine games i'm just gonna say though seven of those games were draws just got a lot, a lot of, of, <laughs> a lot of draws. if you look at their their little form guide it's like oh wow all right you know i actually don't think that's a bad thing for san really? jose yeah just because when i when you look at their um trajectory in the past it was so up and down it was win three to two lose six to one okay win three to one lose four to nothing like it, it could just go all you never knew what you were gonna get and yeah now you'd rather see the consistency in wins or getting over the line but I think Almeida has changed the system a little bit to play a little bit more practical at times, be a little bit more secure. That man marking run all over the pitch thing it is it's used a little bit more sparingly. Uh, and I think it's a smart move. It, it gives them a chance to give them a foundation and they can move forward. And, you know, in the Cali Classico, there's always that moment yeah. of who knows. And do you think that they're going to play responsible in a Cali Classica? Nah. No, throw that out the window. Nah. There's nah. no more of that. You get Wando coming in for his 401st appearance, I believe it'll be. Oh, in my this God. One. Congrats to Wando. Just continues to set records or get close to him. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing to see what he's doing. But you want to see Wando in the Cali Classico? And I do. The other big question is, are we going to see Chicharito? Chicha. Is what? he going to oh. be back? My God. I mean, it has been a minute since we have seen this guy on the pitch. His last match was June 26th. Um, mm. And it's so unfortunate because he was on such good form. He had 10 back 10 goals in 10 games for the LA Galaxy. And so um, I'm, I, I believe he's been training. So he's clearly like on the path to the way back, whether or not we will see him um, tonight. Can I give a little bit of a hot take here? Yeah. You know, I'm not known for my hot takes, but uh, I actually think that Chicharito being out for so long might have been good for the Galaxy. Really? Uh, oh, in a strange whoa. way. Yeah. Yeah. This might just be a Galaxy brain take, but, but in a strange way, they've been able to prove, I think, to themselves first, but also to others that okay. they can get results, that they can get results, that they can find goals. And I think when you look towards the playoffs, you can't just rely on one score mm -hmm. or you can. But we've seen the best teams in the past, whether it's Toronto or Seattle, find that secondary option to chip in some goals. So Cabral getting in on the score sheet, getting more players, more time. Efra has gotten some good minutes in here. He's playing well, a lot of minutes under their belt for the young players on this team. Um, and then they bring in some new signings. So I think that when he comes back, there's going to be a little bit more confidence team to know that it's not just him. Um, although it is nice to have uh, that guy leading the line. Yeah, I mean, hundred percent. But I, do you know what? This is why I love having you on the show. I feel like I, I, I learned something. You always kind of take a little different perspective. Um, but I like that. I like what you had to say there. Thanks. And I think the Galaxy, Galaxy will like it too. Um, again, that game tonight, LA Galaxy against San Jose, ten thirty p.m. Eastern on ESPN two and the Zone. All right, moving right along to the nicest rivalry in soccer i love i'm in the midwest right now and it's just it's 100 percent true so we're talking about uh minnesota united taking on skc this is the first time these two teams have met since uh minnesota gave kc the boot in the playoffs last year in a, a pretty decisive three nil victory um skc though they're coming off a one one draw against portland that nearly um was an l mm. except for one man and That's you talked right. about him Daniel Shalloway, who is, just, I mean, the guy, the guy is just having um, an, an absolutely incredible season. He's got 12 goals. He's got six assists. He, um, he has scored or assisted on five of SKC's last six MLS goals. Um, he is an MLS all-star. So deserved. We had him on the call up this week with Johnny Russell, which was hilarious. They're like, They've got this really funny kind of bro broski relationship. You gotta love um, the Scots. You gotta I love the Scots. know. I they, oh, well, it's the Scots and the Hungarians together. It's just a, a dynamic, a dynamic combo. But he was so, you know, he's he's kind of just taken this all in stride. You know, I've, obviously everyone's going to ask him about the season he's having. Uh, but Johnny Russell said something interesting. He, he was like, "We at the first day of training when they came back from break, he was like, it was like we had signed a new player." Um, and he was like, I don't know. I don't know if it was the, the maybe the, 
the couple off years that he that he had, he was just incredibly motivated. But he said from the get go, um, there was just something different about Daniel Shallowy this year. And he just kind of knew that he was going to have um, a really good season. And here we are. Look at I this. Mean- what I mean, it's, it's very rare that you see a player who goes through a sort of a dry spell and mm-hmm. is just not being able to find the back of the net in the same club for the same team for the same manager. Like so little has changed around. It. Even when you look at the team, like, yeah, the, the, the players are li- largely the same. Um, they added Alan Polito, who I think has helped a lot this season. But it, it's really remarkable to Shally to and credit to him for coming back and being able to stick with it. And for Peter Vermees for sticking with him and giving him that confidence to get back into the team. And boy, has he paid it back? I mean, <laughs> uh, you see late in games where he's just able to find that, that, you know, game tying goal or the game winning goal, all of his goals have counted. And I really don't think it's crazy to think that he could be the MVP. Now uh, I think now when you look at it, sometimes star power does come into it and sure. people will be drawn a little bit at times to the coasts, which, you know, as both of us have spent a lot of time in the Midwest, you being a real Midwesterner, you'll know people don't like that there, but uh, SKT's team, uh, I think has a little bit of that chip on the shoulder. And if, if they're able to get the supporter shield, um, which is not unthinkable, I mm-hmm. think that shallow, has a very strong case. And um, just as a, you know, I think for the players that root for guys like that, that are maybe yeah. not the biggest stars traditionally, you want to see him an all-star, so deserving of it. But I, I think he's also got a shot at some of the bigger awards. Yeah, 100%. And I mean, would be incredibly, incredibly deserving of it. Um, Minnesota, on the flip side, I feel like they've been kind of like sneaky good this year. And they had that, that like incredible unbeaten stretch. Um, they're coming off a 1-1 draw to, to San Jose. I, is this the year? Is this the year, Kaylin, that... Minnesota just sort of like really, I mean, they kind of had the breakout year last year, but I I don't know how, what, how do you feel about this Minnesota team? I still have some question marks. I mean, I I think that they're right in the thick of the playoffs and I think they have that consistency where you kind of know they're going to be there. Um, I do wonder a little bit about kind of where that production for goals comes from. Robin Ludd has been fantastic. He's been really reliable um, and he's, kind of played a bunch of different positions for them. Um, But yeah, I don't know. It's tough. It's tough right now, especially when you look at the Western conference and you say, uh, you probably put Seattle a notch above, Mm -hmm. You probably put the sporting Kansas city team a notch above, Uh, but they'd be right in that next tier, I would say. So I I don't know. This will be a big one for uh, Minnesota. I think to get a chance to really kind of maybe prove people wrong. And we know Minnesota, they like to do that, right? That's that's part of their, Personal. Oh, yeah. It's very on brand. <laughs> At least when Adrian Heath. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> we love it. All right. Minnesota SKC, that game on uh, Saturday, tomorrow, 3.30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN, ESPN Deportes and DAZN. Oh, baby. Another big game on Saturday. Uh, the Hudson River Derby. We've got the New York Red Bulls. Take it on. NYC FC. This is the first one of the season, which... Huh. How how is that possible? We're like over. You know, you know what I like about the rivalries this year and what and this week is good. It, last year we got almost we got spoiled. We got too many of games <laughs> it, because of the regional you know schedule and yeah. all that. It was like you were getting these rivalries all the time. Now it's like you had to wait for Seattle Portland and that like went crazy, which was mm-hmm. awesome. And like now we're getting Red Bull New York City and I, I I think sometimes waiting for it and getting that kind of rarity is is actually a little bit better. Yeah, I I agree. I think this and this rivalry in particular um, is pretty interesting because we've seen sort of this uh, a, a fairly uh, palpable shift from how it started to where it is now. Where I mean, I think we I think the red wedding game was that twenty sixteen uh, or seventeen. 17 was that 17 i mean i just i it was just one of those like oh my goodness i mean new york was very very red for a while but then i mean nycfc the last few seasons have just kind of turned it on they kind of own they own this right now oh, and, and i definitely in better form 100 percent in better form um i, I I really, I really like this NYC FC team. Again, I feel like they're one of these in the same kind of way that Minnesota. They're one of these like sneaky good, sneaky good teams right now. Um, they just got, you know what I like about them? They have this nice veteran core 
right? There's like a lot of guys with experience. We've got like Maxi Morales and Anton Tinnerholm, Sean Johnson, um, Chanel, Collins. Like it's just like there's the, there's guys that that have been competing in MLS for a while. They know this league. Whereas the Red Bulls right now feel they feel very young. I think they're good. I think there's potential there, but it just feels like a very young team. Yeah, and a new manager, and so they're kind of finding their footing still a little bit. And yeah, I think the big shift for NYCFC too has been um, Castellanos getting him going. Tati! Yeah, he's been really good. I, I think people were questioning, well, is he is he a finisher? Can he yeah. get those goals? And he just started getting in. He just get got some confidence and got on a tear. And so uh, getting him going and Maxi Morales, you know, his service is always going to be there. Um, so NYCFC has a wealth of options and. Um, yeah, they're, they're dangerous right now. Yeah, they really are. And, um, speaking of, of lots of weapons and options time now for our 22 under 22 body armor stock watch. And, uh, we are focusing today on James Sands of NYC FC is a young defensive midfielder coming off, um, an incredible run at the, at the gold cup was a, was a starter for, for most of that tournament. Um, he's a consistent starter for NYCFC comfortable as a number six, but he, we saw him playing center back in, in gold cup. So there's versatility there. What do you like about James Sands? Yeah, the summer was a little bit of a coming out party for him. Mm -hmm. uh, he just, I think if you're watching MLS and you watch NYCFC, you know, his qualities, he's very comfortable, composed on the ball can help with distribution, honest wins, tackles. Um, but is a little bit quiet. He's not the guy you're going to maybe see or stand out even in that back line. Um, and when we saw him with the national team, the question was, okay, well, he's going to maybe play in a three backs formation and help with that distribution. But he proved that he can play in a two back as a center back as well. And yes, having Miles Robinson and that athleticism next to you will help. <laughs> but he also brought his own qualities and really stood up to some pretty tall tasks, especially as you look in the final against Mexico and just game after game, he got stronger and stronger and um, learned a lot, I think, throughout it. And so I think when you look towards World Cup qualifiers, he's going to be involved in the mix, kind of, as you mentioned, so as he can play a lot of different positions um, and play a lot of different roles and now has that experience. So mm -hmm. when you see him and Sean Johnson coming back from international duty into this NYCFC team, yes, Tati's going to get the headlines from the goals, but I think in the back is really where in the past NYCFC has run into problems as they've gotten into deeper and deeper into the playoffs. So having that experience now and Sands even a little bit more uh, weathered and strong, it's going to be really, really valuable for NYCFC looking ahead. Great stuff. I love it. All right. Uh, moving along to, oh man, this one, I'm just, I should just kind of let you take this. We're talking about Houston versus Dallas, good old fashioned Texas Derby. Also the Copa Tejas, <laughs> which I'm, I love, I love the Copa Tejas. I think this is uh, such a, such a cool thing that has been initiated. It's so, so neat. So if you don't know, it's basically all the Texas teams competing for the Copa Tejas, the Texas Cup, um, but it's everyone. It's it's Austin. It's Houston. It's Dallas. It's the Dash. Like they've got like all the teams fighting for this trophy, which is so cool. That's but of awesome. course, in this in this particular matchup, El Capitan is uh, is what we're we're fighting for. Um, you have been a part of uh, several of these playing of against. These Against Stephen Keel, actually. Against Stephen Keel, I know. Gosh, um, it's 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 poetic, actually, that you're that you're here today. Um, but you're, <laughs> oh man, buddy, it's been a it's been a rough go for your uh, Dynamo. Ooh. Yeah. Ooh, this thir this El Capitan 13, might be our best chance. <laughs> Thirteen matches. Thirteen Ooh, win. I didn't. Win why, 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 we, we don't need to count them. Winless run. I know. I just. Oh. <laughs> Well, it's, and it's you know tough. what? They started out great this year. And I was like, oh, man, because I think I, I had ranked them pretty low um, in our preseason predictions. And um, Zarek Valentin, like straight up called me out, was like, hey, what's up, Susanna Collins? And I was like, <laughs> oh, man, I'm so sorry. But now I'm kind of like, oh, well. So are you the type? That, did, that didn't know. age well. Yeah. So are you the type <laughs> to like kind of send a quick message back no 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 not <laughs> not not, <laughs> not when they are winless in 13 games okay. i'm not that okay. mean i ain't that's that good. mean that's good that's yeah. good i have a All heart right. 
Yeah, I mean, Dynamo, it, it, it hasn't been good um, as of late. And Zarek, I think, has been first to kind of hold up his hand for the team and say, look, we, we want to do better. We need to do better. It hasn't been good enough. Um, they were winning last week, midweek against uh, Salt Lake and then give up the late goal. So it's just been kind of one thing after the next, but sometimes you need a rivalry match yeah. just to kind of like break everything out and help you get on the right track. And I think this could be that opportunity for my Dynamo. At least I am hoping, I am praying, I am pray, uh, we got to get El Batallon. We need the Copa Tejas. That might be our best chance at a trophy this year. Uh, and some bragging rights in Texas, which is that's what Texas is about. You Heck need some yeah. bragging rights, you know? Absolutely. So, uh, I've spent a lot of time in uh, Austin. It's a fun city, but mm -hmm. I feel like they can be beaten. They beat the Dynamo the first one. I feel like Dynamo have a chance there because they haven't been having the best season either. Dallas has been actually a little bit more trending upwards as of late. You got Ricardo Pepe who's going to be an MLS All-Star. and sure MLS All-Star Skills Challenge, which is going to be really fun. Uh, but I, I think the Dynamo, they got to use this game as, as a platform. They got to mm -hmm. use that rivalry to get them on the right track. I also think they need you to come in and give them a little motivational that <laughs> speech. That was great. I'm fired up. Let's go. Let's go, Dynamo. Um, no, that was awesome. Okay, that game, 8.30 p.m. Eastern on Saturday, ESPN Plus and the Zone. All right, now time for the Rocky Mountain Cup. Colorado taking on RSL, 9 p.m. Eastern, ESPN Plus and the Zone. Um, RSL has historically dominated uh this 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 rivalry um they've won six of the last seven meetings last time they played on july 24th um rsl won three three nil but the rapids are again one of these like sneaky good teams this year they're unbeaten in eight straight home matches um they're in fourth place right now in the west on 34 points which if you if they were in the east they would be in second like that's i mean they're just to give you a little perspective here on on how well Colorado is actually doing, what has been the secret sauce for Colorado this year in your in your mind? I really think it comes down to Robin Frazier. Yeah, I just think he has done such a good job of getting the most out of this team. He's uh, they've done a really good job in the transfer market. Obviously, going out and getting some really good players. We saw what Kellen Acosta, he had maybe the best summer of anybody in in, uh, in Major League Soccer, just fantastic. And then now you see he's going to be paired with Mark Anthony Kay. Um, the two of them are just figuring out how they're going to play together. Kay mm -hmm. wasn't even um, involved last week. But you look around and the, I think that they've done a really good job of finding MLS talent in different places that yeah. may be a little bit undervalued, but that they can get a little bit more out of. And that's been a very different strategy than what we've seen from the Rapids before, where they've maybe gone out for international names or uh, foreign players. And um, even the foreign players that they've found and brought over um, are guys that can really help that already have experience in MLS that are that have quality and you know it's going to work. So I, I really think that Frazier has done a really good job of, of mm -hmm. getting this team together and finding those moments to get goals. They don't have a number nine, like a big, time striker they've got rubio can get goals sure um they've got a wealth of options barrios really stretches the field they've got a wealth of options that can that can chip in but um they found a way to get it done fourth i think you know being where they are on the table right now is really strong and i, I think they're a team that people are not going to want to face come playoff time yeah absolutely um rsl i should mention in fifth place right behind them um on 27 points so there's a, a significant point differential there um what are your what's your assessment of rsl at this point in the season? Well, I, I, I like RSL's team. They, they've been, um, I think they have a number, similarly, they do it by committee. So yeah. they have gotten goals, you know, from Bobby Wood just getting going a little bit. Rubio Rabin has been a really great signing for them. Both find similar kind of uh, profiles as far as former U.S. internationals that have maybe fallen out of favor or fallen out of form or looking for a club and come to RSL, uh, maybe with a little bit of something to prove, but also just looking for a platform to play again and find success. So um, I like that RSL has a little bit of, some of these guys have like a chip on their shoulder. Uh, yeah. Justin Miram's getting going too. He's also, he's always been one of my favorite players, the way he got uh, kind of glides by guys. So 
I, I think this team is good. Um, I think that didn't the last time they played though, didn't Colorado, I feel like there was some trash talking a little bit um, yeah. going back and forth on Twitter. So that's another one to watch. Uh, yep. Looking forward to, to this week. <laughs> I know. We love these rivalry matches. It's great. I love it. I know. Great. They get spicy. Um, guys, <laughs> we have an incredible slate of games for you to look forward to this weekend. Let's put up the schedule, see what we got starting tonight. Tonight, Cali Classico, LA versus San Jose, 10 30 p.m. Eastern on ESPN to end the zone and then saturday we've got that mini kc matchup 3 30 p.m eastern on espn and then we also have that texas derby copa tejas uh coming at you that's going to be crazy 8 30 p.m eastern on espn plus end the zone the hudson river derby New York Red Bulls host in NYC FC 8 p.m. Eastern on FS1 Fox Deportes and DAZN. I mean, there's just there's so many good tasty matchups this weekend. No reason for you not to just take it all in. Enjoy all the rivalries. Um, and I know we've been talking about rivalry week, but um, it's also MLS All Star next week. I'm literally hopping on a plane to LA tomorrow, Caitlin Carr. This is my wow. first. This is my first work trip. That's exciting. Since February of 2020. Wow. <laughs> no, March of 2020. It was where where was right it? Before. Where did you go? Do you know what? I was in, um, I went from Colorado. We were doing the call up live in Colorado, like right before the season started. And then I covered um, LAFC versus Miami. It was Miami's first <laughs> MLS game. And I was doing a pregame show for ESPN. And oh, that wow. was that was it. That feels like ages ago. <laughs> it My last like work trip was to Houston years Houston ago. Houston for Chicharito's first match. Oh <laughs> Which, M -G. Yeah. I don't know. That was that feels like a decade ago. Woo! But anyways, yeah. yeah. All Star is fun. All Star is <laughs> such a good time. The only it's thing, Susanna, I gotta bring it up here. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've had a very consistent streak, as we both have, of making the all-star teams uh, from the media perspective and getting called up and continuing to go. I think we've been to Chicago. We've been to Orlando, yep. San Jose, yep. kind of all over. I didn't get the call up this trip. I mean, this what's is, going on? No, I know. I, don't I mean, even... I know my form has dropped a little bit. But no, I was hoping you no get reason. a commissioner's pick. Or I know. I was really hoping. Something. I was hoping for a coach's pick for you. I don't okay. know. You know, you may have lost a step or two, but okay. um, there's no reason you <laughs> should. Definitely. I definitely lost a step this or two. Roster. I don't know what I'm going to do without you. It's going to be dumb. What are you looking forward to most? So I can oh, my gosh. I mean, I, I'm pretty much involved in, like, all of the little events that are happening. So we have the EMLS um, All-Star Challenge. Uh, okay. that is happening on Sunday that's presented by McDonald's. So I'm going to be, um, on the call for that. We've got, um, the skills challenge presented by AT&T 5G. I'm going to be that's doing funny. the in-stadium hosting. That was, I mean, that was crazy when they did it in Orlando. That was such a fun event. Um, the concert immediately following, um, and then obviously the, the match, and then I've got, we're doing the call up live. There's like this Coca-Cola Coca -Cola beats, cleats and eats little cool. area right outside the stadium. Um, so we're going to be doing the call up live. I mean, it's, it's, it's going to be a very busy jam packed week, but it's going to be a lot of fun and there's tickets still available. You guys can go to MLSsoccer.com um, to get tickets for all of these awesome events. And you should That's check awesome. it out because I'll be, I'll be, I'll be here, there and everywhere. I'm really? really looking forward to watching the skills challenge, uh, just with the names that are involved. It's going to be super fun. Last, the one in Orlando, I mean, I don't know how you're going to top that with uh, Nani hitting the, the crossbar on the last shot. I mean, just incredible scenes. Um, so that's, that's always fun. Yeah. The concert, I mean, who could forget? One of my highlights of my life was introducing <laughs> Flo Rida in San Jose. That's amazing. <laughs> like, I don't even know how I'll ever top that. So that amazing. amazing. You crushed but, that, buddy. You uh, really yeah. did. You really Seuss, did. It's going to be a busy week for you. Woo! I'm excited. You got this. Listen, you got this. Thank you. You are going to be with me in spirit. Kaylin Carr. Can we also give a shout out to our group chat, by the way, with Heath Pierce and Josh in there? <laughs> I 
<laughs> the show's group chat. We got to give uh, a shout out to our group chat. This is my favorite group chat of all time is the one that I am in with Caitlin Carr, <laughs> Heath Pierce, Brendan Hannon, Josh uh, yeah. Farber. It's, um, yeah, listen, shout out you to guys, you guys, you guys get me through many a many a tough day so we love you <laughs> um guys thank you so much for tuning in enjoy all of the rivalry matches this weekend we'll see you at uh mls all-star baby mwah, mwah. caitlin love you buddy dream good to team. be back good to see you Suze. Dream team. <laughs>